I want to give a special thanks to Dr. Clark, my dissertation chair, for really guiding me through this process and helping me throughout the way. I um, also want to thank my dissertation committee members, Dr. Grissetti, Dr. Chang. Thank you for agreeing to be a part of my committee and for all of your support. Thank you so much. And I want to thank my lab members, Jamali and Haley and uh, whoever else shows up today. Um, thank you for being here and thank you for um, all of your support as well, your kind words. And I want to give a special thanks to my friend, Daniela, for helping me practice and a few other friends who will show up at some point today. Um, and thank you, Farlin, for helping me practice as well. Thank you so much. And for all of you guys' support and for believing in me. And also thank you to my brother and my sister who will show up, my family, for um, also believing in me and just helping me and just doing some kind gestures to support me. So yes, thank you all so much. Um, so I guess without further ado, I'm just gonna get started. Okay, so the title of my project is called Social Support from Parents and Friends Among Black and Multiracial Adolescents, Responses to Stressful Situations in Multiple Risk Neighborhoods. So nine out of 10 adolescents living in low income urban communities witness violence at least once in their lifetime, while seven out of 10 adolescents are victims of, of violence. And on top of having some form of exposure to community violence, they also face various stressful challenges like lack of money, lack of food, lack of resources, and discrimination on top of that general stress that adolescents experience within friendships and families. And when adolescents are exposed to all of these stressful situations over a long period of time, they're at an increased risk of developing mental health problems like depression, anxiety, PTSD, delinquency, and aggressiveness. One strategy that is known to be beneficial in preventing and reducing mental health problems, particularly among Latino and Black adolescents living in low-income urban areas, is social support. And according to both Corst and colleagues, social support is the availability of one or more people who can provide care, acceptance, and sympathetically listen when an individual is dealing with problems. So according to Tardy, there are multiple dimensions of social support. And in his study, there were actually five um, the, the, dimensions of social support that he listed. And of the five, three are most aligned to my study. So there is the disposition of social support, the network of social support, and the content of social support. So the disposition of social support refers to social support that is available. So in other words, perceived support or implicit support. And then there's the actual act of seeking social support, which, which can be referred to as enacted social support or explicit support. Then the network of social support refers to the people that are actually being sought or providing the social support. So in other words, the source of social support. And then the content of social support refers to the type of social support that's being provided. And within TARDIS um, study, there were four different um, types of social support. And the two that most aligns with my study are emotional support, which refers to support that the provision of love, care, trust, and empathy. And then informational support, which refers to giving advice. So one theory that helps to explain how social support is as developed and utilized is attachment theory. And according to attachment theory, attachment relationships are first developed through infants being in close proximity to their parents. So Hazan and colleagues further studied attachment theory and they theorized that there's this developmental shift that takes place during adolescence where attachment relationships go from being more observable to being more internal and there's more of a need for relatability. And what the rationale behind this shift was that during adolescence, a lot of important changes take place like cognitive changes, emotional changes, physical changes. And this really makes, um, increases the adolescent's desire to, for more independence and to be um, autonomy, to have autonomy from their parents. And on top of that, adolescents are away from their parents more and at school with their friends and after school activities and um, part-time jobs. So they're more likely or more inclined to seek support from their friends than their parents. They also said that um, parents and friends serve different forms of support or serve different functions for support. So adolescents seek parents in times of distress and, um, and for more serious problems, but they seek friends for like day-to-day -day support. 
So the research on who actually offers greater amounts of support, whether friends or parents, is conflicting. So there are studies that say that both parents and friends offer equal amounts of support to adolescents. Then there are studies that show that par uh, parents or friends, one of the other, offers more support than the other. Then there are studies that show that parent support remains stable over time. And then there's also studies that show that parent support decreases over time. So the research on whether parent or friends offer greater amounts of support is unclear. So there's also variation on um, the impact of friend support um, in research. So there's studies that show that um, friend support can serve as a protective factor and, um, and reduce adolescents' um, chance of developing mental health problems. But then there's also studies that show that um, too much friend support can lead to increased mental health problems. And then much of the research that compares parent support to friend support show that parent support is a better indicator of emotional well-being. So my research question is, in times of stress, are teens more likely to seek support from friends who they may feel a greater affiliation with or from parents whose support might be linked to better mental health overall? So again, a theory that helps to explain how social support impacts adolescents is the matching theory. And Gore and Asselton studied how stress is buffered by the use of social support from parents and friends in response to, in relation to the depressed mood. And according to their matching theory, social support is most beneficial when it matches the stressful situation. So what they found was that when faced with a peer stressor, when adolescents gained peer support that, led to that was linked to decreased depression. However, they found that this match was not the same for uh, parent support and the family stressor. And what they found was that when faced with a family stressor, getting parent support was linked to increased depression. And their rationale behind this was that family, the family support network tends to be smaller. So the chances of having, um, having a family stressor that involves the parent that the adolescent is seeking for support is high and thus decreases their desire to even seek support from that same family member. However, there is subsequent research that showed that when adolescents gain parent support for a family stressor, they are able they, they are able to benefit, and it does increase them uh, increase or improve mental health problems. So there are a number of labs in, gaps in the social support literature. Um, the first is that there's limited research on enacted social support. So much of the research on social support actually focuses on perceived social support and only a few actually look at enacted social support. Then there's a disproportionate focus on emotional support. So much of the social, social support research that actually includes contents of social support actually looks at emotional support as opposed to the other contents of social support. And then there's a minimal research con comparing different sources of support. So according to a 2016 Mennonite study, study by Ruger and colleagues, um, they looked at social support and depression in childhood. And of the 341 articles that they reviewed, they found that 300 actually assessed perceived support, seven studies assessed enacted support, 89 studies actually assessed emotional support, and 170 assessed social, social support globally. So they looked at two or more sources of support or two or more contents of support together. And of the studies that actually compare different sources or different contents of support, um, almost none actually include black adolescents. And also the studies that actually test the matching theory, none of them include black adolescents living in low income um, urban communities. Lastly, there's a limited focus on situational social support. So of the social support research, they tend to look at social, social support in response to general stress and not in response to specific stressful situations that's prevalent to adolescents living in low income urban communities. Okay, so the first aim of my study is to examine from whom adolescents seek social support in response to stressful situations. I first hypothesize that adolescents will seek emotional support from friends more than from parents in response to stressful situations. My second hypothesis is that adolescents will seek informational support from friends more than from parents in response to stressful situations. My second aim of the second aim of my study is to examine differences in adolescents' use of emotional support and informational support from parents and friends in response to three different types of stressful situations. 
peer stress, family stress, and community violence. So my third hypothesis is that more adolescents will seek emotional support and informational support from friends in response to peer stressors than in response to family stressors or community violence. And then my fourth hypothesis is that more adolescents will seek emotional support and informational support from parents in response to family stressors than in response to peer stressors or community violence. The third aim of my study is to examine the relationship between adolescents' psychosocial functioning and their utilization of emotional and informational support from parents and friends. So my fifth hypothesis was that psychosocial problems will be lower among adolescents who seek emotional support from parents in response to multiple stressors in comparison to adolescents who do not. And then my sixth hypothesis was that psychosocial problems will be lower among adolescents who seek informational support from friends in response to peer stressors in comparison to adolescents who do not. My seventh hypothesis was that psychosocial problems will be lower among adolescents who seek informational support from parents in response to family stressors in comparison to adolescents who do not. And lastly, my eighth hypothesis was that adolescents' utilization of emotional support from parents and their ability to match the source of their informational support with the type of stressful situation will predict fewer psychosocial problem, problems above and beyond the contribution of neighborhood poverty-related stress. So for my study, I used baseline data from an after-school preventative intervention program between 2016 and 2018. And of the students that were enrolled in the program, um, some, some of the students attended um, a high school in Philadelphia and some of the students attended a high school in Norristown. And they were between ninth and 12th grade uh, and between 14 and 18 years old. And also I had a sample size of 41. So some environmental context on these adolescents. 89% um, lived in neighborhoods with one in five households below poverty. 65% lived in female-headed households. 46% reported a friend or family member being stabbed or shot. 39% reported a friend um, was robbed or mugged. 32% reported a family member was attacked or beaten. 32% reported a gang fight occurring near their home. And then 95% reported exposure to multiple neighborhood poverty-related stressors. So to measure um, social support, I used three versions of the response to stress questionnaire. I used the family stress version, the peer stress version, and the violence version. And the response to stress questionnaire is a 57 item self-report measure designed to assess the way and way, ways in which teens cope with sources of stress in their lives. So to measure um, um, emotional support and informational support, I looked at four items. Um, item seven and 32 assessed um, um, enacted emotional support and item 17 and 21 assessed enacted informational support. And the, re the, reliability, the reliability of the two items for um, enacted emotional support and the two items for enacted informational support was decent. And then the criterion validity of the two items of enacted parents' emotional support in response to peer stressors and com community violence correlated with a total, T score, a total score of perceived support from the parenting support questionnaire, um, which was also good as well. And the parenting support questionnaire is a well-established and widely used um, questionnaire. And here is, some, is a, a glance of what the response to stress questionnaire looks like. So again, I looked at items like number seven, which assessed um, enacted emotional support. So it says, I let someone or something know how I feel. The adolescent would um, circle uh, the, the, the amount that they did that and then um, check off who they went to for that item. And then item 17, which, which assessed enacted informational support. Um, it asked, I asked other people for help or for ideas about how to make the problem better. So again, the adolescent would um, circle how much they did that and check off um, who they went to for support. So to measure neighborhood poverty related stress, I use the city stress inventory, which is a 18 item measure, self-report measure used to 
assess adolescents' perception of stressors within their neighborhood. And the city stress inventory has two different sections. So there is a neighborhood disorder section of items, and then there's the exposure to violence um, items. And what I did was that because uh, the neighborhood disorder items or scores and the exposure to violence scores um, significantly correlated with each, each other, I created a summary score combining the two, um, the two scores. So this is a glance of what the neighborhood disorder um, items look like. So to ask, it has questions like, I saw people dealing drugs near my home and then there was a gang fight near my home. And then the violence exposure items has items like a family member was attacked or beaten, someone th threatened to hurt a member of my family. And to measure psychosocial problems, I use the youth self-report, which is a 112 item self-report measure designed to assess emotional and behavioral, problem, behavioral problems among youth. Um, and I combined, um, I looked at, I combined the internalizing and externalizing um, total scores and created a total problem score T-score. And some, at a glance, some of the items within the youth self-report um, you suffer part are, um, I act too young for my age, I argue a lot, I feel worthless or inferior, or um, I get teased a lot. So for hypotheses one and two, I ran a series of 12 chi-square Guinness of Fit tests to examine whether the proportion of adolescents who utilize support from a friend or not was any different from chance. And also I examined whether the proportion of adolescents who use parent support or not was any different from chance. And what I found was that Adolescents endorse utilizing emotional support from friends in response to all stressful situations at a rate greater than chance. I also found that adolescents endorse utilizing emotional support from parents at a rate no different from chance. Another thing that I found was that adolescents did not endorse seeking informational support from friends nor parents at a rate greater than chance. Then I ran a McNamara's or, or a McNamara's chi-square test um, to compare the proportion of adolescents who sought support from peers versus parents. And what I found was that the use of friend support was significantly greater than parent support in response to peer stress. So this is a table showing the percentage of adolescents seeking support from a friend versus parents. And as you can see across um, all stressful situations, adolescents endorsed seeking um, emotional support um, at a rate that was significantly greater than chance. So across all um, stressful situations, violence, family stress, and peer stress, they endorse seeking emotional support at a rate significantly greater than chance. So for hypotheses three and four, I ran four separate Co Cochrane Q's tests to determine if there were any differences on seeking emotional support or informational support um, from friends or from parents across three stressful situations. And what I found was that across the three stressful situations, there was no significant differences in a proportion of adolescents seeking emotional support from parents, informational support from parents, emotional support from friends, or informational support from friends. I also found that the proportion of adolescents seeking emotional and informational support from friends was not significantly greater in response to peer stress, and that the proportion of adolescents seeking emotional and informational support from parents was not significantly greater in response to uh, family stress. So again, in this table, the proportion of adolescents seeking peer, um, peer stress, emotional and informational support support from peers, through, from friends during a peer stress was not significantly greater um, within a peer stress than um, violence or family stress. And then the proportion of adolescents seeking parent support within a family stress was not si significantly greater than within a vi violence stressor or within a peer stressor. So for hypotheses five, six, and seven, I ran point by serial correlations to examine the relationship between adolescent psychosocial problems and their use of social, social support. 
And what I found was that psychosocial prob problems were significantly lower among adolescents seeking emotional support from parents in response to community violence and peer stress. So this is definitely in line with the social support literature that says that um, parent support is a better indicator of emotional well-being. I also found that there was no significant correlation between psychosocial problems and seeking informational support from a friend in response to peer stress or seeking informational support from a parent in response to family stress. So what this is basically telling me is that um, there's no relationship between psychosocial problem and matching the source of the support to the stressful situation. So this pretty much told me that the matching hypothesis was not supported. So I didn't go on to test the matching hypothesis with my, with my last hypothesis. So for hypothesis A, I ran a multiple linear um, regression to examine how poverty related stress and emotional support from parent in response to a peer stressor or a violent stressor predicted psychosocial problems. And what I found was that both neighborhood poverty related stress and emotional support from parents were significant predictors of psychosocial problems. So this is a table um, demonstrating the regression model predicting psychosocial problems. And again, both poverty-related neighborhood stress and emotional support from parents were significant predictors. And actually, the more adolescents um, sought parents for emotional support, the fewer psychosocial problems that they, um, they had. So this su supports my eighth hypothesis where um, adolescents who seek emotional support from parents seeking this emotional support from parents will predict fewer psychosocial problems beyond above and beyond the contribution of poverty related neighborhood stress. So what this means for, for clinical practice is that interventions are most effective when they promote emotional support from parents. So even though adolescents are in a period where they want more on the independence and they want to be auto want autonomy from their parents. It just still shows that that initial attachment relationship is still important. And again, that a parent support is definitely is still is definitely a predictor of emotional well being. Um, also, interventions are most effective when they promote seeking additional sources of support. So again, because of the degree of distress that adolescents are experiencing within low-income urban communities, seeking just one source of support might not be enough. Um, either the friend or parent might not be able to provide support um, because of the different st stressful situations that might be going on. So have, encouraging them to seek more than one source of support is really important. And then also promoting youth to recognize that emotional support from parents can be helpful, helpful across different types of stressors. So just normalizing um, ad the ad adolescents to, use, to seek their parents for different stressful situations, not just community violence or maybe a family stressor, but for just different situations. And actually there are some, um, some interventions that are targeted um, to, um, or that focuses on improving adolescent and parent relationships. So there is attachment-based family therapy, which focuses on improving parent and adolescent relationships and improving relational skills. And then there's this program called FACES, this, the FACES program, which stands for Families Coping with Economic Strain. And this program encourages families to communicate and cope with poverty-related stressors. So my study does have some, um, have some limitations. Um, I used the cross-sectional design. I feel like if I would have used a longitudinal design, um, I definitely would have been able to see any changes over time, as well as see if there's any patterns with age and social support. I also had a small sample size. I had a so sample size of 41, and I feel like if I would have used a bigger sample size, um, it definitely would have increased the validity of my, my findings. Um, I also was missing some data, so not all the part the participants completed the questionnaires in its totality. And then I, my study also relied solely on self-report measures. And there is a chance that the adolescents may have inflated or deflated their responses. Also, the method that I used to measure social, an active social support. Um, so I used the response to the stress questionnaire in a way that it was intended to be used. For one, I only looked at two items to measure emotional support and two items to measure informational support. And I also measured it in a new way. Um, also, it was unclear whether the support members were actually involved in each stressor. So I, I, what, it wasn't clear whether who, the parent that was involved in the family stressor was the same parent that 
um, the adolescent was seeking for support, or it was also unclear whether the the peer that was the friend that was involved in the peer stressor was also the friend that the adolescent was seeking for support. Lastly, there was no descriptive information on members of the support network. Um, in a lot of families, not just Black fam families, um, who adolescents or people in general, in general consider to be family members isn't exclusive to just blood relation or blood relatives. Um, it kind of extends beyond that. So it's not clear um, who the adolescent um, considers to be a family and who they don't really consider to be a family. So it wasn't really clear who they were actually seeking for support and having this information was definitely deep in the understanding of who the adolescent is actually going to for, um, for support and within each stressor. So my study does have some strengths. Um, I examined two forms of social support. I examined emotional support and informational support. I also looked at um, examine enacted support opposed to the often studied perceived support. And then I also um, looked at two different members of support, so the parent and the friend. My study also included Black multiracial adolescents living in multiple risk urban communities. And my study also looked at situational support, so specific stressful situations that were more prevalent to these adolescents living in low-income urban communities. So future research, should, future research should definitely examine more than one form of social support. Um, I think it will also be interesting to see how um, if parent and friend actually offer more benefits or is a better indicator of emotional well-being than just uh, support from parent, or if there is even a sequence sequence of support. So whether I'm going to a parent first and then going to a friend is uh, is will provide more benefits to the adolescent, or going to a friend first and then a parent, or a parent then a friend will provide more um, more support for the or more benefits to the adolescent. Um, future research should also further understand adolescent social support network. So again, because um, for a lot of people and a lot of family dynamics that to the term family is kind of used loosely, it's not just exclusive to um, who, they're, uh, who they have blood relation with. So just understanding exactly who they're going to for support will definitely deepen under the understanding in, um, this, um, in the literature. Um, future research should also further examine um, enacted social support as opposed to the often studied perceived support. And future re research should also further testing of the matching theory, um, also on like diverse samples, not just, um, not it, it doesn't just have to be Black adolescents, but just diverse samples and diverse um, backgrounds or, or racial backgrounds, SES groups, um, as well as um, looking examining the match between parent support and other stressors and not just parent support and family stress. Um, lastly, future research should also examine the impact of COVID-19. So my data was collected between 2016 and 2018, and I think it will look really different from um, a data that's collected during the pandemic or even after the pandemic. Um, adolescents are going from being in school every day with their peers to now having to be home for school and um, probably being home with their parents, not being home with their parents, um, being on a computer all day, not seeing their friends every day. Um, it, it's just a lot of changes. And then there's the lack of resources, lack of money, then people getting sick. So it really be, will be important and interesting to see how COVID-19 may have impacted their use and their and the impact of gaining support from not just friends, but even parents. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you.